Hello, I am Commissioner Emma I. Darnell. Welcome to Mighty Five Conversations. Conversations is a monthly information and communication program focusing on the sustainable community. Economically strong, environmentally safe, with liberty, justice, and opportunity for all. The topic for today's conversation is the state of Fulton County's children. Who cares? Thank you for joining us. I'll be back in a moment. Joining me in the conversation today is Jennifer Bottle, Program Manager for the Child, Adolescent, and Family Program in the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. Uh, Mrs. Bottle received her bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Wisconsin and her master's degree in marriage and family therapy from Syracuse University. Mrs. Bottle has worked in the field of behavioral health and adolescent and addiction for over 19 years. Welcome, Ms. Barrow. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for your service uh, to Fulton County. Uh, we want to talk about the Oak Hill program, but I believe your program includes more than the Oak Hill Center. What about that center that we have at Adams Park? Is that part of your program? That is. That's, that's what I thought. That's the clubhouse. Yes, um, it's the clubhouse. We call it the Fulton Clubhouse for Youth. Yes, yes. I want you to tell me about that program as well. Uh, it occurred to me that actually your program involves more than Oak, Oak Hill, mm -hmm. but in whatever order you want to. Okay, well. Uh, to tell, tell us about the program, what we do there. Sure. Let, let's start with the Clubhouse. That is a program that's operated under the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities um, Child and Adolescent Program. It so it's operated at the Clubhouse, which is in the old Adams Park Children's Library. So a few years back, we renovated that space. It's fabulous. It's really nice. It's it, really nice. We kept all the, uh, the bookshelves and so kept the library feel, filled it with books for the young people. That program's for 14 to 17 year old adolescents who struggle with uh, issues of addiction. So mm -hmm. alcohol, uh, substance abuse, particularly uh, alcohol and marijuana. Are they referred by the courts? They are referred by the courts. We have a, a pretty robust uh, relationship with the juvenile drug court. Uh, that program's called Choices. And so yes. a good number of those young people come through our clubhouse program for uh, anywhere from six to maybe nine to 12 months. Mm -hmm. And how do you measure your performance uh, uh, with respect to this population, what you do there? Sure. And we it, know these are not widgets we're dealing with. We're dealing with, with human beings. People. But I know that you all have, have to develop, uh, may not always be quantitative, but uh, let, let us know what, 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 uh, how you evaluate your performance. Sure. Uh, this program is intended to decrease involvement with the juvenile justice system. Mm -hmm. So for young people who are not involved, we want them to stay not involved. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that are already involved, we don't want them to have any new charges. So you have recidivism uh, goals. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We also look at involvement with the family, how are things going at home, really making sure that young people have that, that connection. And if they don't have a, a family connection, how can we help find one, foster one, establish one, um, with maybe extended family, perhaps a grandparent. Um, we look at school, we look at grades, we want to make sure that young people who are not attending school get into yes. school or uh, get into a GED program. For those who are in school, we want to make sure that they're doing well. Um, I notice you call your program uh, and family center. That seems to be a major focus that you and your staff have. Um, we don't, uh, yeah. we don't just think that Young people are are the only one that we touch, so we know that they don't. It's a family, isn't it? Yeah, we yes. they don't exist in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So we invite the entire family into the process. The, How does that go? What are the dynamics of that situation? At the clubhouse, uh, we do family night once a month 
Yes. We bring in speakers. It's residential too, isn't it? It is not. So it, it is not. It, it, it's just yes. just for for kids to come in the after school hours. Yes, yes. For those who require residential, there are a few places that we refer that you to. You refer them to. Yes, mm -hmm. I didn't think it was large enough really for yeah, a residential. no one could stay there. The kids would like to stay there. I know they would. They, <laughs> they really enjoy were it. excited about it. Yeah, they enjoy it. They enjoy it. So Oak Hill is the larger campus. Yes. That's the Child, Adolescent, and Family Center. It's a 22-acre campus that started out as our behavioral health counseling program. That's all we did. Um, we saw young people and their families for counseling, child psychiatry, um, for issues such as uh, attention deficit disorder, problems in school, those sorts of things. Are they, do the schools refer them or how do they come from the school? We get a lot of our referrals from the school. The bulk mm -hmm. of our referrals, I would say, come from the school, the juvenile court, and word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little something about that program. So Oak Hill is a, is a vast program. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of uh, programs that we offer there. So we start with my program, which is the behavioral health program. Yeah, that's program. the one I wanted to get. Yep. Yeah. So, we do individual and group counseling and family counseling for children and their families, uh, starting with babies. We, we, we start at birth up to age 21. So mm -hmm. as long as you fall in those guidelines and you live in Fulton County, you're, these services are available to you. So they aren't just restricted to folks who live in that Geographic, geographical no, area. you don't need to live near Oak Hill. Uh, we're right on the bus line, 95 stops right outside our gate. That's good. And so we serve everybody in, in Fulton County. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's no particular zip codes uh, that, nope. uh, that, that you have as clients. And we see, we see kids from all over. We see families from all over. And for those that can't get to us, we make sure that we uh, give them a referral that's, that meets their needs. Yes. When, 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 when people in your field use the term at-risk children, are they referring to children from certain uh, areas or low income or what, what, what does that term really mean in terms of, of uh, the use? So you, uh, you professionals may not even use that term, mm -hmm. but what um, does that usually mean? There's some misunderstanding about that. Sure. It, really, at-risk can be any young person. Um, Irrespective of the income. Income, race, gender, it doesn't matter. Uh, we really believe that all children need uh, to kind of have hands wrapped around them mm -hmm. to make it to adulthood. And mm -hmm. so sometimes those hands involve those of professionals. Mm -hmm. um, behavioral health counselors help from issues related to, like I said before, attention deficit disorder, which, mm -hmm. you know, makes kids have kind That's of a difficult a time. Yeah, sitting still in, in class, yeah. paying attention, focusing. But we also see kids who's, you know, maybe their grandma died and they're having a hard time with grief and loss. Uh, maybe one of their parents is incarcerated. Um, maybe just their girlfriend broke up with them and they're just really having a hard time with that and they need someone to talk to. Well, why is it some children seem to have a problem with these crises in their lives and other children seem to be able to you know, handle them Kind better. of bounce back. Yes. Yeah, I think everybody's, everybody's different it's an in individual. that. You can't, yeah. answer, you can't know. answer that generally, can you? Can't you can't know, and neither can we. We can't right. know how uh, a loss or uh, a traumatic event is going to affect us until it happens, and mm -hmm. that's why we're there, so that if something does happen, uh, you've got someone in the community that you can reach out to that can help. Well, you know, it's that old uh, environmental uh, or natural uh, causes of things. Um, some folks have told us that uh, there are so many negative environmental factors in the life of a child that can affect their ability to cope with these uh, challenges that all children have. Uh, what is your comment about that? Uh, uh, or is it that some children are just bad and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, has nothing to do with the fact that they have an insecure situation? Just about food. I heard a principal say the other day that, uh, of course, we, uh, you know, we were supposed to know this. It's a direct relationship between, you know, poverty and performance in school, for an example. And uh, he was saying children are hungry. Many times when they come when they come to, to school. school, yeah, I want to talk to you about that when we come back. They tell me I need a break now. Okay, 
I want you to help us understand that. I will. All right. Bottle, we were talking about this whole question that uh, I get asked many times uh, about children, particularly those who have had problems with the juvenile court. Um, you, you know, they say, you know, almost some of these kids are just bad. You can't do anything with them. Uh, I know this is a, a, a issue that even among you professionals that you talk about a lot, but what, what is our response to that, that question? You might as well just give up because uh, some kids are going to do right and some aren't, you know. So what, what, do, what do we say about that? We don't really believe that they're bad kids. Um, some kids live in bad situations. Some kids encounter bad situations and they make sometimes bad choices. Um, but every child deserves the opportunity to have someone that they can sit and talk about what's going on in their life um, and, and get some other options and some other opportunities. Parents do the best that they can with the resources that they have, grandparents, uh, kin, kinship care, they do the best they can, and um, we're there to help. Mm -hmm. um, what do you say to the idea that there are factors that affect the life of a child over which they have no control, maybe some social and economic mm -hmm. uh, factors over which they have no control, which also make it difficult, you know, as they grow older, uh, to conform uh, with acceptable behavior. We teach kids how to cope. Yeah, so that's what it's about. That's it? all it's about. That's what we do. So there's certainly a stigma, I think, still attached to seeking behavioral health counseling. Um, what we look at it is, it's just coping mechanism. So for whatever reason, a family, a child, a young person is getting stuck and we help them get unstuck. We can't change maybe the socioeconomic uh, situation. We can't change poverty and hunger, um, issues of race That's and gender. That's not the role of behavioral health, It is absolutely it? is not. Mm -hmm. It's to say, things are tough. How could you deal with them better so that you can stay in school, so that you aren't involved with uh, juvenile court, uh, juvenile justice, um, we don't want kids to be uh, put out of school. We don't want kids to be locked up. We want them to complete school and be successful and and live a life that we think every child deserves. So it seems that unlike uh, those of us who are in the world of politics and government, you, you deal with that person one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you, you, you don't have another agenda uh, in terms of uh, a certain philosophy or a certain political or economic strategy. Uh, it yeah. seems as if in behavioral health, and we some of us still call it mental health, but uh, whatever the grand toys uh, want us right. to call it, <laughs> and that's what we'll call it. Um, uh, it seems that in your business, though, you're dealing with that person. Uh, you're not coming in there judgmental. That's what it looks like. No, we deal with people and we want to know how can we help you. We ask mm -hmm. clients when you're done with treatment, which may be six months, nine months, a year, how do you want things to be different? Do you want to stay in school? Do you want to go to a different school? Um, do you want to stop getting in trouble at home? We ask the kids in their own words, I want to stop being grounded. Okay, well let's help you do that. What do you need to do to do that? You need to stop getting in trouble at school. You need to maybe finish your need, homework. Maybe they needed somebody to ask them that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe yeah. nobody ever asked. Maybe nobody asked. And so that's what we do. We, we provide the services that the kids need. And we know that parents, like I said before, are doing the best they can. So when they come to us, we ask them, you're the expert, so you know your child better than we do. What works? What do you think doesn't work? And how do you think we can best help you? Mm -hmm. What are some of the strategies without uh, of course, as a layperson, we wouldn't really understand uh, too deeply what your <laughs> strategies are. But what are some of the kinds of evidence-based strategies and just those that you've observed as a professional in this field that seem to have the greatest impact on a child? I think that it's important for kids to know that they've got a sense of safety and a sense of structure. And so oftentimes that comes from the parents. And so 
Oh. We will, we, that's why we bring the family in. So Ooh. we can teach a young person all types of strategies and techniques to deal with their emotions. Interesting. Um, but if we send them home and we haven't taught their parents that same skill, then the child sometimes gets stuck. So mm -hmm. we really believe in bringing the entire family in. Um, and we ask them, you know, what works and why does it work? Um, all too often we get stuck on the things that don't work and we forget the strengths that we already know we have. One of the interesting things that I've heard as you talk about your strategies in your work, and that is you don't approach the child or the child's family as if you have all the answers. <laughs> I mean, you ask questions and let them respond. Sure, they teach us and they learn yes. from other families. When we do the family night at the clubhouse, they learn from each other. We can just sit back and watch it happen. That must be very exciting to see that. It is. There are certain basic kinds of things that uh, everybody responds to. You mentioned one of them. You use the word structure. You know, the, 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 the presence of structure seems to be a positive. It is. Children thrive. They need some they, order. They mm -hmm. thrive well with order, don't they? Right. Order in a child's mind is safety. Yeah, so I it's know, safety, isn't it? I, right? I know what to expect, yes. and and that's where the coping skills come in for those kids that don't have that they structure have it, yes. for whatever reason. If it's a um, a parenting issue, maybe it's a foster care or adoptive situation, um, maybe it's a food insecurity, a poverty situation. They tell me that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be, they're hungry. Yeah, they're hungry. Mm -hmm. They need resources. They don't. They don't have utilities. So. In addition to behavioral health counseling at Oak Hill, we provide case management. Yes, tell which, us about those other things that you do. So important. Case uh, management is critical, isn't it? Absolutely. Families come to us because their child got kicked out of class for throwing a pencil at the teacher. Okay, That's what they came to us for. When they sit down with us and we close the door, we find out they've moved three times in mm -hmm. the last three mm -hmm. months and they're mm -hmm. not quite sure where they're going to be living and they don't have enough food and kids are coming to school hungry. Um, and so we we don't just provide counseling and coping skills, but we also provide case management. That's very important. Connection to resources, housing, uh, affordable housing, jobs yes. for the parents. And, yes. and there are so many other resources in Fulton County. They come to us for their child, but we find out that they need services as well. That's very interesting. Maybe that's what that uh statement I've heard so many times I try not to use it about taking it takes a village <laughs> uh, it, it, it takes services a, a combination of services from a variety of places to help doesn't it it does we call that integrated care it, yes. it takes integrating services across the board stepping out of our silos and connecting with our colleagues to provide services to the families in Fulton County that's a very very important point it's very helpful to us particularly in government who are policy makers, mm -hmm. we either go from one extreme many times, meaning well, right. from one extreme to the other, either doing very little or believing that we can do it all. Right. What we see but we in... we really can't, can we? What we know works is blending resources. Blending resources. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what families... They never come to us for just one thing. Yes. And you have families that come. Mm hmm we often see the siblings. So one child comes, then we find out another child's having an issue in another area. Um, mom's looking for a job. Uh, you know, dad needs resources. Uh, when we, we see a good number of, of grandparents raising their kids as well, the grandkids. I want to close on that, Ms. Bottle, only because they're giving me a signal. I'm really just getting warmed up on this <laughs> because parents, community people, elected officials, all of us want our children to do well, but we, we have many ideas that are just not true. Like, for instance, some of these kids are just bad, you know. But many of our senior adults are, are raising their children, their grandchildren. And one of the questions that I hear most frequently is that, well, what can we do, you know, about my child, you know? And so it is a community wide issue and uh, when we say it, it takes a village it means I guess we got to understand 
it has to be a blend. It really does take all of us, doesn't it? It does. I thank you so much for coming in, Ms. Barlow. Thank you for having and me. And this information is going to be very important, uh, not only to us as policymakers, but also to the people out there. This is what they want. They want information that's going to be helpful, you know, to them. And thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. I'll be back in a moment with closing thoughts. In 2013, 7,000 cases were filed in juvenile court. Of this number, 1,384 were classified as, quote, deprived, end of quote. Juvenile court officials have advised that there are many school and community services, like the Oak Hill program, that are available to at-risk children who enter the juvenile court system. However, my friends, without a proactive parent or advocate like you and me who understands how to access these services, the majority of at-risk children will never receive them. In the matter of Fulton County's children, the time may have come when we must do more than talk the talk. We must also walk the walk. That's all the time we have for today's conversation. Until next time, stay strong. To learn more about today's conversation, contact me at 404-612-8222. That's 404-612-8222. 8222. You can also email me at emma.darnell at fultoncountyga.gov. Visit us online at emmadarnell.com or connect with us on Facebook or Twitter.